morning church let's rise to our feet we'll spend some time in prayer even as we begin to worship and praise God as we learn from his word let's just spend some time in prayer yeah Heavenly Father we thank you Lord we thank you for this time God we thank you for your goodness God we thank you for your grace Master, we thank you for the breath in our lungs. We thank you for the food on our table. God, we thank you for our jobs. God, we thank you for the rest you give us. God, we thank you for every relationship that we have, Lord. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our children. God, we thank you for our spouses. We thank you for our parents. God, we thank you for our in-laws. Master, we thank you for our co-workers. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Master, we thank you for our communities. God, we thank you for our life groups, oh, Master. Lord, we, as a church, we are here. We are gathered in your presence today, Lord. It is because of you. And we thank you for that privilege. Master, we praise you and we glorify your name because you are King of kings, Lord above all. Lord, yet you chose to send your son Jesus to die for us on the cross. Lord, we are so precious to you, O oh Master, and that is why we are thankful today. Everything we have is of you, O oh Master. We, we are created we, in your own image for your glory, O oh Lord. It's not us. It's you. It's you. It's always been you, O oh Lord. It's always been you, O oh Master. Help us to do your will, O oh Master. Help us to serve your purposes, O oh Lord. Lord, help us to not get carried away in this world when we see people doing their own things, when they are doing big things. Help us to not get carried away looking at these things, O oh Lord, but help us to stay focused on you, O oh Master. Help us to stay focused on you. Help us to do what you want us to do, O oh Lord. Not something of our own will, not something of that we, we desire, but Lord, your purposes and your desires, your visions for us, for this community, or for this church, your purposes alone. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Lord, we need you. We need you. God, if we have to, Lord, wade through this earth, oh Master, we need you. We cannot do anything on our own and we acknowledge how weak we are in our flesh. God, if, it, if we, are, we have anything and if we are doing something amongst it, it is only because of you. King of kings, Lord of lords, may you be pleased today. We, we just place every concern of ours at your feet. Everything, everything that we are holding back, every area of our life that we are holding back, Lord, we give it unto you. And we trust you to handle it, O oh Lord. We open up our lives, we open up our hearts at this moment. And we request 
week, Lord, we ask you that you will give us a fresh anointing today. Fall afresh on us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Yes? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So here's the thing. We've been uh, encouraging everyone right from the first service to do this. Um, you know, every time we are like, God, please give us this. Please do this. Please do that. No. So we are not going to do that today. Okay. We are instead going to believe that it's already been done. Yes. And um, we know that every curse, every bondage has already been broken on the cross when Jesus died. Yes. Do we believe that? Yes. Every sickness, every shackle is already gone. Every negativity is already gone in Jesus name so uh, you know throughout the song that we sing we are going to keep singing in Jesus name I want you all to sh declare that loudly and just believe and say in Jesus name okay just believe it boldly and just declare it yes yes okay let's sing
God says, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Yes? Whatever we lose on earth is losing in heaven. Yes? That's such a powerful thing to say. Yes? Don't you think so? And even in the Lord's Prayer, God, you know, Jesus teaches us to say, you know, your, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So basically, we, it has to happen like a mirror. You know, what happens there has to happen here. There is already deliverance in heaven. There is deliverance on earth because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's just choose to just worship him today and say, whatever I have here, God, you take it. I'm not going to handle it anymore. You take whatever it is. You take over. Let heaven come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, this is a very familiar song. So declare it with all your heart.
sorry for those times when we held back, when we didn't give it, give our everything to you, O Lord. God, we are sorry for those times when we thought we can handle it on our own. God, we are sorry for the times when we thought you cannot do anything here. We wanted to do it with our own strength. We are sorry for those times. We surrender every aspect of our lives. We surrender every aspect of our lives, O oh Master. Even as we sing this again, let's just imagine you're opening up everything. Just open up everything and say, yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. that our lives are not about us so much. It's about you. Our lives are meaningless without you, O oh Lord. Whatever we are doing, whatever we are trying to accomplish, O oh Lord, it is meaningless without your presence there, O oh Lord, without our every breath being about you, it, Lord, it has no meaning at all. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning. It's all. 
church Every knee will bow Every tongue shall confess you is all about you Jesus we are here to look up to you we are here to seek your face we are here to acknowledge you as the true and the living father we are here to acknowledge your sovereignty over our lives this morning is all about you father how we sang this morning father we want to pray and ask that you would be the center of our lives that you would be the center of every area of our lives thank you jesus thank you jesus come take control of our lives intervene into our lives this morning take us back for you jesus restore us back to you if we are lost if we have moved away from you from your presence from your word this morning father we pray that you would restore us back to you for we don't belong to this world but we belong to you jesus we belong to you father we are yours we are yours church can we just confess that this morning that we don't belong to this world but we belong to him we belong to you jesus we are yours we are yours and yours alone thank you father fill us with your power this morning with the power of your spirit this morning intervene jesus deliver us deliver us this morning from everything that we've been entangled in our lives with deliver us this morning father we pray that you would release your spirit upon all of us here this morning and deliver us free us from every sin from every unrighteousness we need you father we need more of you in our lives won't you come and fill us we need more of you jesus We need more of your grace. We need more of your favor. Fill us. Let your love overflow in and through our lives this morning. The church needs you more. More of you. Even this morning as we take time to pray for one another in the body of Christ, 
Father, we pray that you would intervene into our lives to bring about healing, to bring about restoration. There are many who are sick. There are many prayer requests that keep coming in, Father. But we look up to a Father who heals, who delivers, who restores. So I pray right now for your healing power to flow in the body of Christ upon those who are sick, upon everyone who's going through different kinds of treatment, who are battling cancer, who are met with an accident, who have gone through a surgery, are in the recovery stage. Father, I pray for your healing touch. Church, if there is anyone whom you know who receives a healing, who wants a re healing touch from God this morning, can you just voice out to God this morning? He is here to heal, to touch, to deliver. Father, we thank you for you strengthen our weak bodies. You are the one who continues to strengthen us in our weaknesses. So we receive your strength upon our bodies this morning. If there is any other need that you've been praying for, that you've been waiting on God for, lift it up to him this morning. For he is our provider. He provides if there is any thing that you've been praying for, for any breakthrough that you've been praying for, this is the time for you to just intercede and look up to God. For he is a God who breaks through. Thank you. We want to receive everything that you have in store for us, Jesus. We want to receive it. For you are a God who chooses to bless. You're a God who chooses to provide. You're a God who chooses to heal and restore us. So we receive that upon our lives, upon our children, upon our family. And we want to thank you and bless you for who you have been into each one of our lives. For we may fail, but you never fail us. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. You will continue to pursue and sustain us through, through our life challenges, through every storm that hits us. Thank you for your unfailing love. We commit and surrender this rest of the time into your hands. Speak to us this morning, Spirit of God, won't you move amidst us? Convict us of things that we need to be convicted as a church. Open up our eyes to the things that are unseen, to the things that we, we are not able to understand and comprehend. But today, Father, I pray that you would give us that wisdom to understand and to know more about you. Let that be our desire this morning, to know more about you. Reveal yourself to each one of us through your word this morning. Bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Such a joy to see all of you this morning. Okay, I see all serious faces. Last service I had some joyful faces. Okay, are you all joyful in the house of God? Amen. Yes, it's such a joy to be here this morning because you know why? God is so true and he's so real, right? And that's the reason I think all of us are here because we have experienced and encountered God at some point of the time in our lives, right? So we are here rejoicing in his presence, acknowledging him for who he is. And today I'm going to talk about the same God who is a God who intervened into our lives maybe months ago or years ago, years, years ago, but he is the same unchanging God even today. Amen. He's a God who intervenes, who has intervened, who is continuing to intervene in our lives for his plans and purposes to be fulfilled in and through our lives. Amen. So are you with me this morning? Yeah. So God is a God who intervenes and you know for what he intervenes? He intervenes to rescue us and to restore us back to his ways and to his plans and purposes for our lives. Do you agree with me? Yes, so why does he intervene? To restore us, to rescue us for his plans and for his purposes to prevail and to be fulfilled and accomplished in each one of our lives. And when he intervenes, he's a God who 
uh, gives us focus, he directs our steps, he gives us uh, clarity, gives us enough strength to pursue, to persuade what he wants us to do and accomplish. Amen? Amen. But the challenge that most of the times we go through is we continuously pray and ask God for him to intervene into our lives. It may be different things that we've been praying for. Maybe a need, a breakthrough, some blessing, spiritual or a materialistic, worldly blessing, whatever it may be. But most of the times, many a times, we receive what we've been asking for, but then our focus shifts from God to the blessings that he blesses us with. Yes? Yes? You don't agree with me? Yes? But why does God intervene? Of course, he wants to bless us. He wants to give us what he wants to give us and what he wants to bless us with. He's a God who blesses. Okay, I'm not saying he doesn't bless us. He's a God who blesses, he gives. He's Jehovah Jireh. He provides all our needs. He takes care of us so beautifully, so miraculously every single day. But then he restores us for him, not for this world. Okay, so today God is going to look into all of our lives, those who are lost out in the world, to rescue them and to restore them back to him for his plans to be fulfilled in and through their lives, okay? To get into a little more deeper into what is this intervention about, divine intervention is absolutely God's miracle over our lives. Yes, it's definitely a miracle. The spirit of God is at work in our lives is definitely a miraculous act of the power of God upon our lives. This uh, two weeks has been a season of uh, fasting and uh, praying. And what we've been praying together as a church is that the Spirit of God will just baptize each and every one by His power, by His Spirit, and just bless the entire church with His gifts so that we together as a church will grow, will be established more and more in Him to fulfill His plans and purposes in and through the church as a whole. Amen. So if you have not been able to do that for so long, if you can set apart time every single day to wait on God, to receive his power, he's going to fill us. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to equip us to do all that he has called us to do. Amen. Amen. So divine intervention is definitely a miracle, a miraculous power and touch that comes straight from the throne of God. So do you believe in that? And are you willing to receive that from the throne of God this morning? Amen. So it was the power of God which was at work when uh, Jesus did this miracle of turning water into wine. Yes? You have any doubt in that? No? So it's always the power of God that brings about a miracle, that brings about a shift, that brings about a change and transformation in each one of our lives. In different circumstances, in different situations, God intervenes. Maybe each one of us seated here are going through different situations in our lives. Not everyone is going through the same situation. Not everyone is going through the same circumstance. But God continues to intervene through our different situations that we go through in our lives. We have to be rescued and restored back to God because we don't belong to this earth. So if you are living a life just for the world, God is here to touch you and to bring him back to you this morning. So we are going to look into the scriptures from the story of five different people in the scriptures to see how God intervened in the lives of these people at different point of their need. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to start with God's intervention in the time of need. I think... Almost all of us may have different needs that we've been uh, praying for in our lives with, okay? God is going to definitely intervene, but he's going to get us back to him, okay? May, we can be uh, rejoicing when God blesses us. We can acknowledge him when he uh, blesses us with things that we've been praying for, but the focus cannot shift from God to the blessings that he gives us. So here we are going to look into Hannah's life. How God meets her at the point of her need and continues to fulfill his mission in and through this family, through the child that he blesses this family with, and how he fulfills the plan through the child that he blessed them with. So to look into a little bit of uh, Hannah's story, I'm not going to uh, read any scriptures for you this morning. All these five stories are very familiar stories. I'm just going to give the reference you can... Uh, I'll just refer back uh, later to, so to start with from Hannah's life. We see this uh, 
uh, story where uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 2, 3, where Hannah is desperate for a child. So her husband is Elkanah. Uh, so the wife is Hannah. They've been praying and asking God for a child for years. And what we see, uh, which surprises us sometimes is, Elkanah had another wife who had sons and daughters. But then God chose to close Hannah's womb. We don't know why. Why did God bless one with sons and daughters? And why did God choose to close Hannah's womb? So we're not going to get into research of God's divine wisdom this morning. But what I want to emphasize is everything that happens in our lives and everything that God allows to happen in our lives is with a purpose and for his divine plan to be fulfilled and accomplished in our lives. Okay? So here we see Hannah. She's not giving up on praying, okay? Year after year, they as a family are going to the temple and praying. We see uh, how Hannah prays very earnestly, okay? She's just pouring out. She's just pouring out her heart to God, crying out desperately to receive this miracle from God. Very faithfully, not giving up on God. But it was not a season of... Uh, uh, something which was so easy for us. It would definitely have been a season which was painful because she sees the other wife blessed with children. Yes, so it would have definitely been a very difficult season for her, but she faithfully looks, looks up to God for him to bless her with this miracle. And as she's praying, she also makes a vow. She says, God, if you bless me with a child, I am going to just dedicate him for your service the rest of the days of his life. It was a difficult commitment, right? Yes, but I don't think she's painfully saying that. With all her heart, she's just saying that, God, if you bless me with this child, I'm going to give this child fully for you, fully for your service. Because she knew that this life, if God chooses to bless her with, it's from God and it is for God. How many of us can say that, God, I am yours my life is from you and for you. Yes, so here we see Hannah's prayer, a very sincere, a painful prayer, but with all her heart. And as we read the story of uh, this couple, we see that God chooses to bless them with a child. Yes, and now we see Hannah rejoicing. We see Hannah, after receiving this uh, gift, after her uh, prayer being answered, she's been rejoicing. She's been testifying about God, but she's not actually shifting her focus away from God. She holds on to the promise and the commitment that she has uh, given unto God. And she, after weaning her son, takes him to the temple and leaves him there to serve God. As small as he was, as young as he was, she just leaves him at the temple to serve the God, the giver of life. And was God's mission accomplished then? No. God continues to move in the life of Samuel. The purpose that God had to accomplish through this family, through this child that God gave them, God is continuing his mission. God is continuing his task. And what happens in Samuel's life? Right from his young age. The word of God says, even before the word of God was revealed to him, he actually heard the voice of God. So that was the life of Samuel. Maybe it was because of the prayer and the dedication that his mother made. But even before the word of God was revealed to him, he was able to hear God, but he was not able to recognize the voice of God. But then through the priest Eli, God is directing him to recognize the voice of the father. And then he learns to recognize and God had a plan, a specific plan for his life, and he reveals what he had to do to the nation of Israel through Samuel. So that was God's intervention in Hannah's life and Samuel's life. And after God intervenes, we see that God chose him to be a prophet for the nation of Israel. Amen. So God chose him, and he was an attested prophet of God. God recognized him. The nation of Israel recognized him as a prophet of God. Today, how many of us are being recognized 
by God. Yes, God has a plan, has a purpose for all of us. He has recognized and identified each one of us, but are we there for him? Are we available for him? Here in the life of Samuel, we see that he was there for God to fulfill the purposes that God had in and through his life to be fulfilled. So, so we see God intervened and God's encounter in little Samuel's life to fulfill his plan. And we see that he was the last uh, judge of Israel and the first of the prophet, uh, prophets after Moses. Okay, so that was about uh, Samuel, about how God encountered Hannah at her point of uh, need and through her fulfilled the plans and purposes for this beautiful family. Amen. Amen. So the next scenario that we, we are going to look into is God's intervention even when we are forgotten. God still continues to intervene even when you think you're forgotten. Okay, you are actually not forgotten by God. But when you think that you're forgotten by people around you, maybe you're part of a community, you're part of a, a gathering where you're regularly meeting. Sometimes you think that you are... Uh, uh, ignored or rejected by your own family. No one is there to acknowledge you or to tell you um, who you are in Christ, whatever may be the situation. But here we see that God intervened into David's life when he was forgotten by his own father. Yes, so this we see in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 16. Again, we see uh, how David was a young boy, a young shepherd tending sheep no one would think that he would become a king right yes if you look at him being a very young uh, boy being the last son to his uh, father it would it would be very difficult for us to even comprehend or to understand that god would raise him to be a king over uh, israel but that was the plan that god had for david Okay, so for each one of us, God has a specific plan that he wants to fulfill and accomplish in and through our lives. So what was God's plan for David's life was to raise him as a king, though he was forgotten by his father. So when we see uh, Samuel being sent to anoint uh, David as king over uh, Israel, now he doesn't know who David is, okay, so he has to identify. So now all the sons, Jesse is bringing all his sons one after the other, and finally, but he knew that God, as he was directing him to choose the right uh, king, he knew that the first seven were not the uh, sons whom God had chose to anoint. So then finally, he asks Jesse, is there anyone else? So he says, yes, I have one more son. But he's busy. You know, he's busy taking care of what? Sheep. So he's busy in the field. But then God was very sure. And God was speaking through uh, uh, Samuel that this is not the person, but there is one more. And so he tells Jesse to bring him, and he waits for the last son to arrive. And after he arrives, he recognizes him and anoints him as king over Israel, absolutely by God's direction. Okay, so that was God's plan for David's life. I don't think David would have ever imagined that God would choose him for such a position. Uh, to, you know, uh, rule the nation of Israel, but that was God's plan for David's life. Though he was not acknowledged by his uh, father, ignored by his uh, father, his, uh, his father would have not even thought that uh, he would be considered to be as the king, so that's why he didn't even want his uh, son to be there in that uh, uh, situation. But then God was very specific what he had for David's life. So David becomes God's best choice to replace Saul as king. So are we God's best choice? Yes, we are God's best choice wherever God has placed us, wherever God has positioned us. There is no doubt in that because he knows where we need to be. He knows where we can be and where we can be there and still accomplish his plans and purposes for our life. So if you're not content about where you are, if you're not content about what you do, get back to God and ask God, the reason why he has placed and positioned you the place where you are in. So God knows the best for us and he places us and positions us in the best place that we need to be. Amen. So when we look into David's life, he was Israel's third most important.
important king. That's what we see in the scriptures. He was, he was the third most important king and David reigned over all Israel. So David reigned over all Israel and he administered justice to the people of uh, Israel. And God declared to David that through his offspring, so his mission is not ending there. Okay, so God declares through David, uh, to David that through his offspring, he's going to build his temple. So there are a few things that God entrusted David to do. But then God is saying, you're not going to build my temple, but your son is going to build my temple. So his mission, his plans are uh, continuing from generation to generation. And through Solomon, the temple of the Lord was built. Amen. So that, that was God's intervention in David's life. Though he was ignored and rejected by his father, God had a plan for his life. Today, all of us here have a specific purpose and a plan in our lives uh, to be accomplished for God to build his kingdom. Do you believe in that? Amen. Amen. So the third scenario that we are going to look into is God's intervention even when we flee away from him. Okay. God intervenes even when we flee away from. Maybe today, you're trying to run away from God for a longer period of time. Maybe week after week, Sunday morning, you're here, but you don't want to really partner in the mission that God has called you to partner with. Maybe you are in a place where you're saying no to God. You've been disobeying God. You've been rejecting God for a long time. But don't worry, he's chasing you. He is behind you, and he will pursue you to fulfill his plans and purposes. So we're going to look into Jonah's life, how God pursues Jonah. So all of us know Jonah's story. Uh, we read about his story in the book of Jonah, chapter 1 to 4. Just to brief a little bit about uh, his story. Um, Jonah was a good man, by the way. Okay, He was very righteous that he was not able to accept God's graciousness and compassion over people who sinned. Okay, So what was God's mission for Jonah's life was God wanted Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh so that he could share what God had to share through him to those people to rescue them back to him. Jonah was a person who very well knew who God was. Many of us actually know who our God is. Okay, I think all of us, we know who our God is. We know who he is, but we still choose to disobey and run away from him. That's what exactly Jonah does. He knew who his God was, and that's the reason why he exactly ran away from God. He didn't want to do what God wanted to do through him. Because he was so very judgmental. He said, these people of Nineveh don't deserve God's forgiveness. They don't deserve to be rescued. They deserve to be punished. Many a times, we also are in that kind of a situation where we want people to suffer. If you have done a mistake, suffer. It's okay. We sometimes fail to forgive one another. We sometimes fail to bear with one another. We fail to love one another. But God wants us to do that. Yes, so here we see Jonah. God is asking him to do one thing, but he doesn't want to do that because he thinks that these people of Nineveh, they deserve God's wrath. They deserve to be punished. So he runs away. So God is asking him to go to the city, but he is running to another direction. He's taking a ship and he's uh, sailing to Tarshish. But what happens there? God is not letting go of him. God is chasing him. God is following him. And uh, you see that the ship that he is in, there was such a storm that to save the life of all the sailors, the culprit had to be thrown out of the ship. Okay, so here they recognize the culprit. And now uh, Jonah is acknowledging and accepting that he is the culprit. Okay, so he knows what he's doing. He knows clearly what he is up to. He knows who the father is. He knows who his God is. He knows that he has done what is not right. He knows that he's been disobeying. He knows that he's been rebellious. But still, he doesn't want to fulfill what God wants to fulfill in and through his life. So he runs away. But then here we see a situation where he is thrown out into the sea. But then did God leave him? God brought to his rescue. What did he bring to his rescue? A whale. So now the, he's inside the belly of the whale. But thankfully, what is he doing inside? <laughs> he's praying. Thankfully, he's praying inside the fish. And then again, God speaks to him the second time. Okay, now he knows that now he doesn't have an 
option. Again, if he's going to take another ship, God is going to still chase him. And we don't know what animal God is going to send next. So he, he doesn't have a choice. He doesn't have an option. He, he, he agrees to what God asks him to do the second time. So now God is again going to him with the same task. Sometimes we are not happy with the task that God gives us. We are like, God, this is difficult. Give me some other task. Or sometimes we look into the lives of others and this life, this person is living a good life with, a sim with simple things that he's doing, but why do you give me so hard tasks that I'm not able to do? Because we have all kinds of questions and reasons to uh, justify ourselves with God. But God has a specific plan which he wants to pursue through Jonah. So he's not coming again to Jonah with another task or he's not looking into someone else to fulfill the task, but he's again chasing Jonah to fulfill the same task that God had for him to accomplish. So now when God spoke to him the second time to proclaim the message to the uh, people at uh, Nineveh, now he doesn't have a choice, he goes there. And now when he shares the message, the gospel that God wanted him to share, everyone is repenting. So what was God's word? If they repent, God is going to rescue them. If they get back to God confessing their sins, God is going to definitely rescue. That's the God whom we serve. That's exactly what Jonah didn't want to happen. And that's the reason why he ran away. So when he sees what God is doing, he's actually not happy. He's upset with God. Many times we are upset with what God does in the lives of people. We ask God, why do you have to bless them when they're not praying? I am praying, but I don't get anything. They are not praying, but they still receive everything. Now, sometimes we have many questions that we keep asking God uh, for. But here you see this man being upset with God for what he did for the city. Yes, but then God was still very patient with him. God beautifully explains to him how important these 120,000 souls of Nineveh were to God because they were his. They were not the world's. God didn't want them to be destroyed in the world, to be perishing in this world. So he clearly tells uh, Jonah that they are mine. How can I even let them be destroyed and just let them perish here on earth? So he beautifully explains to him with the help of a plant. If you read through the story of uh, Jonah, Jonah was worried about a plant that grew and withered in a day. But then God is saying, if you are concerned about that so much, how much more will I be concerned about these 120,000 souls? So that's how God is explaining to him the importance of his people, of his children who are perishing here on earth. But God still perceived and uh, made his uh, work to be done, to be accomplished through Jonah. So God still chooses to intervene even when we fly, uh, flee away from him. Amen? Amen. So maybe you're able to relate to any one of the scenario, but if you're not able to relate, there is a different particular situation in your life that God is looking at to intervene, okay? So the next uh, scenario that we're going to look into is God intervenes even when we are against him. God intervenes even when we are against him. So we're going to look into this scenario from the life of Paul. So Paul, everyone knows about Paul, right? So we all love him, right? Yes, we look up to him for many things. So Paul was such a kind of a, a leader. But then how was his life before he encountered God? How was his life? He was a persecutor of the church. He was a persecutor of the disciples of Christ. He was a persecutor of the children of God. That was the life that Paul was living. But he was very passionately doing that, okay? Sometimes we, are, we passionately do many things which are not right. We think that they are, our passion is from God, but sometimes we passionately do the wrong things that God has called us not to do. Okay, so here we see Paul, a persecutor of the church, but God knew that he was so very uh, capable to do and to build churches across Asia Minor and Europe and the Roman Empire. And God took a hold of him by encountering him. He didn't punish him for what he did. He didn't punish him for the churches that he persecuted or for the disciples that he persecuted, but God took a hold of him by encountering him, by revealing himself to him and took a hold of his life. And that encounter that he had with God changed his entire life. 
So God intervened and used him. When you read in the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 1, we see that Paul was even approving the death of Stephen, who was the first martyr. So that's the kind of person who Paul was. But then how God turned around his life to be a church planter from a church persecutor. So that was the turnaround that happened in Paul's life when God encountered him. So God, through Paul, did a lot of things that we see in the scriptures that we read in the book of uh, Acts in the New Testament. So Paul made his life mission to bring the gospel beyond the Jewish com com uh, communities. So he reaches to the Gentile community. So God used him so powerfully. God used him so mightily. But was his life easy? No. He had to go through pain. He got, had to go through trial. He had to go through suffering. He had to uh, go through hardship, shipwreck. But through it all, you see the strength and the power that he received from God enabled him to do everything that God had called him to do. And he was one of the most influential leaders of the early church. Isn't that amazing? How many of you want to be Paul? I've heard of people who say, I don't want to be like Paul. I can do few things, little things, but I really don't want to be Paul. It's so hard to be like Paul. But how many of you want to be like Paul? <laughs> no one wants to be like Paul. <laughs> you don't have to be Paul. You have to be just you. You just have to be you because God will use each one of us according to how he wants to use each one of you. Yes? So God had a specific plan for David. God had a specific plan for Jonah. God had a specific plan for Samuel. And God has a specific plan for you and me. You don't have to imitate anyone else. But at the end of it, we as a church are building the kingdom of God together as one in Christ. Amen? Amen. So over the course of life, we see through the missionary journeys of Paul, how he plants and multiplies churches across and through the power of the Holy Spirit that was continuously at work in him, he performed signs, miracles, wonders. Many come to the saving knowledge of him. He casts out uh, demons. He delivers uh, people. People are touched. People are healed. And through his life uh, journey, he brings many to Christ and builds the church, church of God. So Paul did so much to spread Christianity in the first century than any other person. So that was the kind of life that Paul lived after God intervened into his Life. Though he was against God, God turned him towards him. Maybe there are a few things that you still are not acknowledging about God. Whatever may be, God is going to get you back fully to him. Because unless and until that happens, you will not be able to stand in his perfect will to fulfill the calling that God has upon your life. Amen. Fifthly and finally, the fifth scenario that we're going to look into is, God intervenes even when we feel we are not worthy. Yes, maybe some of us here think, maybe I'm not called for this. Maybe I'm not worthy. Maybe I don't deserve to do certain things. Some of them are called. Some of them can do. Not everyone can do. Maybe not I can do. Even if you feel that you are not worthy, even if you feel that you're not ready or prepared, God is going to intervene because he intervenes even when we feel we are not worthy. You know why he intervenes? Because everyone is called to fulfill the purposes of God, not just few chosen people. We are all called to fulfill the great commission that God has upon all of us, all of our lives. So we are going to look into this scenario from Moses' life. Again, Moses' life, a very interesting story that we read in the scriptures from Exodus chapter 3, 4. We see briefly about uh, how Moses experiences God so close to him in the burning bush. Okay, how many of us want that experience? The burning bush experience. Yes, to experience God so close. So he comes close to the burning bush to see what's happening. And then he recognizes it was God. The angel of the Lord speaks to him. And God says, you remove your sandal because the ground that you're standing here is the holy ground. So then he recognizes, identifies this. But then why does God even show up to him is to reveal his plans to Moses. Okay, so God is saying that I want to reveal my plan to you and I am choosing you to rescue the nation of Israel from the clutches of Pharaoh, from the Egyptians. So that was the plan to be fulfilled through Moses' life. So God chose him, God reveals his plan to him. So now what happens with Moses? Did God not know that uh, 
uh, Moses uh, will not be able to do it. God, I trusted him fully to do that. That's the reason why God is approaching him. That's the reason why God is getting back to him. But here we see Moses coming with a lot of excuses. What does he say? He can't speak. He's saying that I stammer. I can't speak. And what is, with what other excuses does he come? Afraid. He's saying, who am I to even, uh, for Pharaoh to listen to me? You think I'll go and talk to Pharaoh and he'll just let your people go. So he has all kinds of questions. So he comes with a lot of excuses, reasoning out with uh, God. Do you think God didn't know all this? God definitely knew. So God was again and again telling him, you don't have to worry. I am with you. So you trust in me. When God calls you for a mission, our trust is not on our strength or our, our ability. God is not trusting in our strength, in our ability, in our wisdom. But God is saying that I am with you. I am going to strengthen you. I am going to equip you. I am going to train you. But I need you. I need your availability. Many of us, many a times, are not available. We are not available. We don't have time. But God is saying, I am with you. I am going to help you. So he's, he's uh, speaking to Moses again and saying, you don't have to worry. I will be, be with you. And when he says, I can't speak, God says, God was upset. Okay, when you see, uh, when you read the scripture, it says that God was upset with Moses. Sometimes we upset God with our response. When we say no, or when we rebel, when we disobey, we think God is gracious. Of course, God is still gracious, but then he, we sometimes upset him with our response. We sometimes grieve him with our response, but still God didn't give up on Moses. He said, don't worry. If this is what your problem, God would have chose to heal Moses, but he didn't do that, okay? He still brought his brother to be a mouthpiece for Moses, and the task that God had to accomplish through Moses, God still pursued only through Moses, Yes, yes, so God definitely brought a help for him to be a mouthpiece for him. But then what God had to fulfill through Moses, God didn't give up on Moses, but he pursued and accomplished that what he had to accomplish through Moses. So God intervened into his li life and God prepared him to lead. God prepared him to bring out uh, Israelites from Pharaoh. So that's the kind of God whom we serve. We we are created by him. We are, we are created for him. We are in the world for a task to be accomplished. And our life here on earth is temporary. Temporary. So he is calling us to fulfill the plans that he wants us to fulfill as long as we are here on this earth for eternity. Amen. So he plans, he orchestrates. Nothing is coincidence. You being here this morning is not a coincidence. He plans, he orchestrates, he intervenes in our lives, and he continues to work in and through all of our lives. So what is stopping us today? So what is stopping us today to obey to God's voice, to be a blessing in his kingdom? Maybe we are leading a good life. Maybe we are having good family. Everything is okay with our work. But what is it that we are partnering with God in fulfilling his mission? in building his kingdom. So that's the question for us this morning. What is stopping us today? Am I lost in the world? Am I running after this world? Am I happy with the blessings of this world? What is stopping us? Have you not realized that the hand of Lord is upon you? Hand of God is upon each one of us. He will continue to intervene and restore us back. But are you disobeying? Are you running? Or are you being available for him? So if you want this God of encounter, this God of intervention, to intervene into your lives, maybe at some point of your need, but through it to restore you back for his kingdom's sake. If you are willing to be there to receive this encounter and intervention from God, can you just stand up to your feet? We're going to pray together for God to help us in our weaknesses, for God to help us with all the questions and doubts that we have in our mind, because he wants to rescue us. He's not going to just let us go in this world. He tried so much to pursue Jonah to rescue his people. That's the God of compassion whom we serve. He's not going to let any one of us perish here on this world. He wants each and every one of us. Each and every one of us here are so precious in his sight. Can we just close our eyes, lift our hands and say, God, I belong to you. I surrender. I commit my life.
Jesus be the center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. From beginning to the with is all about you Jesus it's all about you so this morning father even as we commit our lives we pray that you would restore us back to you Jesus though we are lost maybe some of us are lost maybe some of us are running away from you maybe some of us feel that we are not worthy to serve you maybe some of us are praying and waiting on you for certain things but father we pray that you would intervene into our lives and take hold of our lives this morning because we are yours and we belong to you and to you alone thank you jesus give us the strength that is required give us the wisdom that is required from above give us the clarity and help us to focus and fix our eyes upon you this morning we don't want to be lost jesus we don't want to perish here Thank you for your grace that sustains us. Thank you Jesus for your love that chases us, doesn't give up on us. We acknowledge you this morning. We acknowledge you to reign supreme in our life this morning. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. request the ushers to take up the offering at this moment.
just like you, Lord, in all the earth. Matchless love and beauty, endless work. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. to meet you all once again through this platform as we all aware as a church we are taking time from august 16 to 30th to learn more about holy spirit and also to take time to fast and pray not just this season from right from the beginning of this year god has been teaching us about the many things of the spiritual reality god is using many of our sermons to teach us about the spiritual realm sermons like the stages of the holy spirit and transforming power of the holy spirit all these sermons god the spiritual reality. So August 31st, we as a church are gathering at our NLCC Zamin Palaram campus to really tarry in the presence of the Lord. We're going to spend time in worship, prayer, asking and seeking His power to come upon us. I truly believe that God will unleash His power upon His people. And I truly believe that this will be yet another remarkable day in your life. Please do register now so that we can make better coordination and make this event better for you. God bless you. Don't miss it. So as we've been announcing for the past few weeks, um, we as a church, as part of our life groups and households, we've been going through a time of 
uh, teaching or learning of uh, both the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, and, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in line with that, so we're going to be coming together on the 31st of August, as we just saw, um, for a retreat, half-day retreat at NLCC. Uh, so request everyone, if you haven't registered as yet, to please do register and join us. Um, we're also going to have a time of teaching and prayer for our kids. Uh, so request all uh, the parents to please bring your children along as well. And so once again, I want to encourage everyone to come and uh, come with expectation uh, for God to do great things in our life. We've started uh, with, we started with the 15 days of fasting and prayer uh, from the 16th of August and it'll continue until the 30th of August. Um, so if, uh, you know, if you would like, to, we've got a couple of days more to go. So if you would like to join and pray along with us, uh, please do contact the support desk at the back and uh, they will be able to share more information. So at this point, we also want to uh, give an opportunity to those who are not yet part of a life group. If you're not yet part of a life group, we'd like you to join us, right? So our life groups are small community setups where we come together uh, every week and fellowship, pray together, worship, learn the teachings of Christ, right? So if you're not yet part of a life group, can you please raise your hand and indicate to us? Our ushers will come along and give you a form so that we can uh, contact you later. If you hear anyone else who would like to join a life group, please indicate to us by raising your hands. So the prayer guide uh, for the month of August is available. Uh, so if you would like to join along with the church and pray, uh, again, please uh, indicate to us and our ushers will come along and give you a hard copy. Um, so if you're interested, please raise your hands. Uh, if you'd like to download a soft copy, uh, you can visit the link bit.ly slash nlagcpg. So we, as always, we encourage you to use this to, during your personal and community times of prayer. So next Sunday is a mission Sunday. Um, we have our missionaries across India who will be in the city for about four days. Uh, so we uh, request the church to pray uh, for all the mission works that's happening across India and being supported by our church. Uh, we will also be distributing a missions pledge card next week. So please do come prepared uh, to support our missions generously. Let's also continue to pray to ask God to, to uh, pour out a spirit upon us or to empower us uh, to do more of these mission works and to establish and expand his kingdom, not just in India, but globally as well. The 1st of September, uh, we will have a communion service right here. Uh, so request at 6 a.m., request everybody to come and join us as we seek the Lord while we begin a new month. That's all for the announcements. So before we close the service, uh, we want to definitely welcome all those who have joined us for the first time. So if there's anyone here who has come in for the first time for the English service, can I request you to please stand uh, so our ushers will come over and uh, give you a card uh, that you can fill up and then so that we can get to know you a little better. So if there's anyone here uh, for the first time who has come in for the English service, can you please stand? Anyone at the back? Okay, thank you. Just can we rise to pray and close the service? Father, we just want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for this time, Lord. We thank you for your word this morning, Father. Lord, we make it a prayer this morning, Lord, that, that Lord, that you would intervene in our lives, Father, to, to rescue us and to restore us, oh, Father. Lord, we pray that you would intervene, that your divine plan and purposes will be fulfilled in our lives, oh, Father. Lord, I pray that we would have a receptive heart and mind, Father, to understand your calling and to be obedient to your word of Father. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the love of the Father and the grace of his only Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. And all God's saints said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week ahead.